Hi, hello, Grezi. Today I want to talk to you about something very close to my heart because it affects me in my private life and affects me in my work. It also affects me on some of my YouTube videos because of some of the comments I got below my gunstock video because somebody wrote he printed it in carbon fiber reinforced PETG and it basically broke immediately. So I already answered to that by stating that carbon fiber reinforced PETG is actually not as strong as just PETG. So I got some carbon fiber reinforced PETG with me. I use it for stuff that needs a lot of stiffness, for example, or a lot of like structural integrity in like X direction, for example. But actually this material is weaker than this material, which is just normal PETG. The problem is that it's marketed by all the different companies as being stronger, better for high load applications and shit like that. And that's actually just not true. So I had the idea to make this video to actually show you in a scientific way that this basically is a scam. What? So how are we going to do that? We will print some test pieces in PETG uh, carbon fiber reinforced and normal PETG and PLA carbon fiber reinforced and normal PLA and we will go to a professional material testing setup we have here and actually compare those two. So the first thing we have to do is of course we need our test pieces. So there are norms about it, how you can uh, like do these test pieces and stuff like that. We don't necessarily have to adhere to those norms right now. We will do our own geometry because we want to test just the same part against the same part. One other thing I will change is that I will use standard printing parameters. That means that our parts will have infill and everything. Normally, if you test materials, you will go with a full material printed in different directions. That's not what you do at home, right? So yes, you find out what the material itself has a strength, but you want to know what your part will have as a strength. So what we're going to do is we will print our test geometry once in X laying down, once in Y laying down, and in Z laying down. We will print multiple of those in all the different materials and just compare their strengths when it comes to ripping them apart. So that's the only metric we were going to test right now because that's basically what you will encounter if you load it. Of course, there's breaking forces and stuff like that, and I will do those tests later, but for this video, just do the one metric where we do a printed part as printed at home and compare the different materials to each other. So first thing we need is testing geometry. So for that, I already opened up an instant of Inventor here. And on this, we will now draw our geometry. So I will go with a fairly simple geometry. So we will go with a 20 millimeter circle. We will extrude that for 20 millimeter. And the part we rip apart will be about, let's say, a millimeter. Okay, this is our testing geometry. So here we can have the holder grab it. Here we basically have a weakening point so we know exactly where it breaks in the middle of the part. So of course I can't really print it laying down. So what I will do now is I actually cut off a little bit. So I have a flat surface. We will basically print one of them in X, one of them in Y, and one of them upright. So the print will take some time, but then we get all the different axes with like all the strengths you can get in those axes. Because if the fiber goes that direction and you pull that direction, it actually changes a lot of the print. We will print them all at once because that's how you would print parts, of course. And then we will compare them to each other. So we slice, standard settings, 0.2 millimeters, everything standard, PLA, print. So what I do now is basically I take the exact same file and I simply switch to PLA carbon fiber reinforced. The thing is that we took the same materials from the same manufacturer. So the one with carbon fiber, the only difference is it has carbon fiber in it. So we have a good comparison. PLACF, I slice again without changing positions or any metric. And I simply say print plate and send it off to the printer. PETG basic and PETG 
carbon fiber reinforced. These machines are kept up to date with all updates. They are kept well maintained according to the maintenance plan and everything because we use them a lot for research and for medical 3D prints. So they are as good as you can take care of a printer. It's basically like brand new. They're calibrated and everything. Most people don't have industrial 3D printers at home. That's why I'm excited to announce our partnership with one of the most competitively priced and high quality manufacturers out there. PCBWay. PCBWay is very renowned for their PCB manufacturing capabilities. They also offer industrial grade 3D printing and with worldwide shipping it will show up within days on your doorstep. So let me quickly explain how carbon fiber reinforcement in 3D printing works. Who was that? Okay, when it comes to carbon fiber reinforced plastic, normally we talk about one of two things. There is two different ways of carbon fiber reinforcement. One is called SCFR and the other is CCFR. So what that means is this one is short carbon fiber reinforcement and this one is continuous carbon fiber reinforcement. So what that means, the continuous fiber, carbon fiber reinforcement, we leave that out of it because what you do there is you have one continuous string of carbon fiber laying down basically when you see when, when this is your filament coming out of the nozzle, you then add a carbon fiber in the middle of it. And like when you lay it down, it will be continuously in the middle. So this one is true carbon fiber reinforcement. We are not talking about that because that is special machines. They're hugely expensive. You will never do that at home. What we concentrate on is short carbon fiber reinforcement. So what that means is that in the filament itself, if you have your string of filament on the spool, there is carbon fibers, very short, everywhere in there. And due to manufacturing, they are pretty much everywhere around. And they're very amorphous, which makes the filament itself very strong. In 3D printing, you, of course, have your printing nozzle. And you extrude filament. So the filament comes in here and it gets pushed out of the nozzle and laid down on top of your last and the layer before. What happens now is because of the melting and the flow of the material in that direction and then it flows out in that direction. All the fibers here, they are amorphed in all directions, but here they start to align. So all the fibers are now in direction of the nozzle movement. Same is true for here and for here. So what it does, like those carbon fibers have an extremely high pull resistance. So what it does in that direction, the print is very strong within one printing line. But in this direction, you actually get no benefit because the carbon fibers are not going through the layer lines. They are aligned with the print. Some carbon fibers are on or in the boundary layers here. Carbon fiber can't get adhered to plastic. It can't melt into it. It can't bond to it. So we have our two layer lines here. In here, basically you have your polymer chains. The polymer chains get melted down and they adhere to each other. So you have a polymer chain here and you have another polymer chain here. So what happens here is because those two are touching and they're hot, they adhere to each other. They do an interlayer bond, they melt to each other. When we now introduce carbon fiber into a mix, and the fiber itself is laying right here. Now you have no bond upwards and you have no bond downwards. So this whole area is basically not bonded to each other. You could see that, for example, like when you try to glue two things to each other, but you only apply glue to part of it. And you apply glue here and you apply glue here. So only those areas will actually hold any pulling force applied into that direction. And all of these areas here will actually just peel apart. So there you have it. That's the theory behind it. So let's see if our tests will tell us the same. Shut up. <laughs> so we have our uh, testing setup or our testing parts now and what we need to do now is to somehow attach it to our pull testing machine 
uh, because we've gone with a custom form, we have to do custom holders. We don't have standards for pulling tests that much because the machines are mainly used for biological samples or gels. So I've got a bar of aluminium here and it is a little bigger than that and we will manufacture our attachment out of this. Uh, to eliminate any kind of stretch because like if I would 3d print those attachments which would work because it's like so thin here um, We could get some uh, Elastical deformation or even plastical deformation in the holder. So that's why I'm going for aluminum aluminum Let's cut off a piece so we can work on the lace and manufacture our holders So this is our testing setup. We have our tensile bars. I actually made loads of them. So I will test about 10 of each printing orientation and material. So you have 10 PLA in X printed, PLA in Y printed, and PLA in Z printed against 10 PLA carbon fiber. You got the gist. So this is the holders we made. You can simply enter it like a bayonet and now it's actually already pulled to a preload of two Newton meters. So it's nice and tight. So we don't have any movement without actually stretching material. I zeroed it. And basically with the press of one button, the program will start. We use a speed of 0.16 millimeters per second, which is about 10 millimeters per minute. So to give the material really time to flow. And this is actually taken out of the industrial standard for testing materials like that. We're testing ultimate tensile strength here because it gives us the best idea of the strengths of a material when it comes to 3D printing. Let's just start it. It's pretty slow, but you can actually see the displacement and here the Newtons go up. So 200 Newtons, 300 Newtons, around 500 this material should actually fail. The lamination and now it broke. It breaks very slowly, but that's actually exactly what we want to have. So let it be done with seven millimeters. And we're already in the negative forces of three Newton, which is okay because we had a preload of about that. So I can show you now what actually is the outcome of it. So it produces a graph here and you can already see strain, strain. That's all still elastic deformation. And then you see this little notch here. Here we go into plastic deformation and here is the fail. And then it basically goes down. So let's do all the others and then we see. After completing all the pull tests, we reached our final conclusion and let me tell you, boy oh boy, the data is quite shocking. 
Before I give you all the data and the final conclusion on this experiment, I want to do a small little disclaimer. While we employed scientific methods and adhere to every scientific rule there is, we did not use pulling specimens according to norm. The correct norm for this would be 527 for uh, testing specimens for plastics. We also did not fill them to 100%, so we didn't test the material property itself quite as much as we tested basically a printed part. But that was our goal, to see what you actually use and if that holds any merit to the claim they do that it's stronger. There will be actually now a complete real research paper done on this that I will do together with other groups from my university where we really focus on doing everything according to norm and testing standards to prove this once and for all and even publish it so it's board reviewed. So I will update you when this will happen, but let me tell you, like getting a research paper done in that scope and also getting it published can take up to a year or one and a half. So yeah, maybe subscribe that you don't miss it. I don't know. So. The final conclusion now is I would like to start with PETG and PETG carbon fiber reinforced. As you see, I prepared a bar graph just to make it easy to understand. The Z axis is blue, the Y axis is orange and the X axis is green. This little white area you see on top is actually my error margin. So basically within this area, all my measurements were. You can see that these error margins are most of the time very small, which means we had quite consistent outcome on the tests itself. Our raw material is nearly double as strong in the Z axis than the carbon fiber reinforced one. What I did not expect in that amount, that X and Y axis is actually weaker by 20% as well. You can also see if I show you this other graph here, uh, it's median and standard deviation. Um, this one is a little hard to understand. Somebody out of the area of material testing or in a field of research will know how to read those graphs. And this actually gives you quite a lot of information about how valid my tests were with like uh, how far the median is apart from my average and how far my standard deviation goes and if everything is within my error margins. And it shows quite good that my sample size was big enough and that all the tests were sound. I also want to include a overlaid picture of how the parts ripped in CF part and a not carbon fiber reinforced part. So you can actually see that it behaves quite differently. So now let's move on to PLA carbon fiber reinforced. There it is. You see, it's quite similar to PETG. What I think is interesting is that apparently the layer adhesion is way better in PLA than in PETG because the difference between Y and Z is not as big here than it was with PETG, but it remains the same. The carbon fiber material is way weaker than your actual material, which I think is really shocking because it's marketed to the market, to consumers, but also to professionals basically as the stronger solution if you need more power, if you need more strength, but it actually gives you less strength, but you still pay a premium on it. So it is either misunderstood by the material manufacturers themselves or it's just a thirst trap. Here again, my median and standard deviation for the people who can read it. I will also provide pictures, high resolution pictures of this below the video to watch at if I find a way to upload them and give it to you. Otherwise, you can always ask me for it if you want to use it for anything. I think that was quite a nice excursive in the research part of my work, but also into the myth of 3D printing. So we could basically say this one was a Mythbusters episode. It was just, it was just extraordinary. If you like content like that, that is more educational or like addresses some of the myth right around 3D printing or one of the common problems or whatever, let me please know. This video is kind of an experiment because it isn't a tinkering video, but it's more educational content, which I would love to do because that's one of my favorite things to do is actually to educate. So if you like that, leave a comment down below, tell me you want to see more and I will do more. See you in the next one.